Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 2 and in today's video I will be showing you how to build and launch your first orbital rocket. That's right. If you're a new player and just trying want to try and see yourself in the rocketry, well, same rules in the KSP-1 apply. So, you want a capsule, you want a parachute and you want a heat shield for the re-entry. Then, followed by the stack decoupler, uh, and then we're going to be placing some uh, Methalox tank, and uh, then we're going to be placing the Terrier engine. This is the stage that will be achieving orbit and eventually deorbiting, of course. We want to put, in addition, the reaction wheels. In KSP-1 you didn't need the reaction wheels, but the reaction wheels, I think, in KSP-2 have been significantly nerfed. So, or actually the reaction wheels of the capsules, that is. So you do need an additional reaction wheels. Right. So we're going to place another four batteries to have the electricity for the reaction wheels and everything. And then we want to be placing two solar panels so with that we can power the batteries, of course. So we're going to take two batteries, uh, sorry, two solar panels, and we're going to be placing them in the two-way symmetry. Uh, they are a little bit crooked, so let me just correct them quickly. There we go. And... Then finally we want to, so this is the stuff that will be going to orbit. We want to also attach the communication antenna. It's not really necessary at the moment for the, uh, for the orbital rocket, but it might be necessary for the probes because they need line of communication to be able to work. So single probe could need this antenna. Otherwise I've just attached it and that's it. Okay. I digress. So let's go further. We need now the decoupler. So this is the stage that will be achieving orbit and deorbiting, as said. Let's take the decoupler and then we're going to be taking the, hold on, stack decoupler. There we go. And then we need to check, want to check our delta V. So uh, KSP2 has this trip planner, which is sort of equivalent to the delta V chart used in the KSP1, for those familiar. And if you want to go from two, you can select one way trip or other, and it will break down the delta V requirements for you, which I think it's really neat. It's a great idea, and I think I'm going to use it a lot. So, Kerbin to Kerbin orbit, don't they don't have, but if you select moon, first instance will be Kerbin, low Kerbin orbit. So 3,400 meters per second delta V we need. And we currently have 1916. So we need a bigger tank. We're going to take the Methalox tank and we're going to attach it. And uh, follow that, we need actually the rocket engine. So let's see how much that delta V will that give us. Exactly enough to reach the low Kerbin orbit. However, you want to go and have some extra to spare. So I'm going to be smacking additional tank just to be over that limit. So 3.7 thousand. Well, that's enough. Uh, fine. Then thrust to weight, checking in engineer's report, is 1.6, which means our rocket will get safely off the ground, no problem. Then we're going to be placing stabilizers, and I'm thinking of taking three of those. Let me put it in three-way symmetry. Good. You don't need more than three. I You could go with four, but I don't know. It's just an extra mass. So thrust to weight is 1.6 and delta V is 3.6 thousand meters per second. That's good enough. So next important thing is check your staging. Staging seems to be working correctly. So the next thing is launch. All right. We are ready to go. So pressing the spacebar will ignite our first stage. So SAS on, throttle to max, and let's go with the countdown. Okay, and when you start press the go, you get this mini countdown, which I kind of found kind of funny. It's really nice. I, I really enjoy it. Valentina, are you ready to go to, to space? Sure you are. All right. And there we go. Our rocket is clearing the first stage and we are going upwards. Beautiful. All right. There we go. Uh, at uh, roughly the altitude of one and a half thousand, two thousand, the surface velocity of 150, I start to do my gravity turn. I start pushing D to get towards the east. And I typically aim for, let's say, I don't know, 
making sure that we have 20, 30 degrees off, uh, off the axis. So that's kind of the idea. And you slowly burn, you know, to the east. And if you're not sure why, well, there's always tutorials that you can check out. By the way, KSP2 has amazing tutorials. And although I'm doing the same thing right here, I'm actually pointing them towards because I think they're cool. You might want to check them out. Regardless if you're a new beginner or uh, an experienced player, there are some cool information you can learn there. All right, so we are putting our apoapsis higher. My goal is to get an apoapsis of 100,000, but I will also be... Oh, and apparently our engine ran out, so pushing again the stage. And then the terrier engine takes over. So... Our apoapsis is 52, and as you can tell, I'm roughly at the 45 degree angle, burning upwards. You can have your ascent steeper or shallower, but you don't want it to be too shallow, otherwise you won't get out of the Kerbin's atmosphere. So, I'm, as I said, and I'm also leaning more and more towards prograde, towards the 90 degree you know, you know, horizon marker because that will actually help me raise my periapsis, which you can see in the bottom left below the, well, nav ball, apoapsis and periapsis. My target would be that apoapsis and periapsis reach 100. However, uh, the apoapsis is growing slow because mainly for due to the reasons for me bur burning horizontally, so I'm mainly raising my periapsis at the moment. But it's okay, uh, and that's a, a lot more efficient burn than uh, it would be if you just go up and then straight to the horizon. So as our apoapsis grows, so does our periapsis. And when we reach 100, I'll cut off the engine and I'm gonna make a maneuver note that will help us circularize. Circularize means, of course, insert into orbit around Kerbin at roughly 100 kilometers. It doesn't need to be precise. It just needs to be good enough. Okay, we are closing up on the 100 kilometer marker and cut off the engine. Great. Oh, I love that tiny animation, how the engine shuts off. Okay, so pressing M will get you to the map view, and then you want to click Add the Apoapsis, click on the maneuver node, and just drag it prograde until the periapsis is out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. You can check it if you click there. It will say 39. That's not enough. We need at least 75 or higher. Okay? When the apoapsis and periapsis begin to switch, then you can actually check, and it's usually... 89 that's good enough all right so the next thing you want to be pointing a maneuver prograde and on the sas control you press that and your rocket will be pointing maneuver prograde pressing the solar panel will extend the solar panels and the only thing that you need to look at now is your burn marker burn timer that's smack in the middle at the bottom just above the acceleration it says require delta v we have don't have enough we have 412 but to get to orbit, we don't need 412. We can actually go with less. Sorry, press the pause there by accident. All right, so the burn will be in one minute. In, Del in KSP2, you get this start burn in and stop burn in, as opposed to the, and also the bar below, which was uh, similar to the green bar we had on a nav ball in KSP1. All right, and burn. There we go, burning slowly towards, and as you can tell, our periapsis is being raised. I just wanted to press F2s to enjoy the view and take a screenshot. There we go. I've paused now because, well, you can do that apparently in KSP2. Okay, and let's continue. Okay, so 101 by 76. That's good enough. We have additional 12 meters per second in our stage and we will be probably using that to the orbit and return Valentina safely back to Kerbin. However, uh, as, uh, as mentioned, this is the way how you launch your first orbital rocket, how you achieve orbit and congratulations, you are now orbital. So thank you very much for watching. Fling a like if you have enjoyed this episode and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.